Hello GameZone viewers. Now, I think we're all in agreement that Fallout 4 has the best and most intricate crafting of any Fallout to date. And as a direct result of that, we spend a lot of our time in the middle of nowhere looking for craft to bring back to our workshop. Anything and everything will do. Anything we can turn into our next sniper scope, our next pistol grip, our next pair of extra padded knee pads. The bottom line is, we need stuff. And now while virtually everything has some sort of use in Fallout, there are really six key crafting ingredients that you're going to need tons of. Aluminum for your settlement and weapon mods. Copper for the machinery in your settlements. Leather for all your armor modding. Oil for your things that go boom. Screws, another mainstay of weapon modding. And adhesive to quite literally hold it all together. Today, we're going to explore how to get a good stash of these items relatively early into the game. But before that, let's talk about tagging. The idea behind tagging items is sort of filtering the stuff you want. So when you go to open a chest and there's a bazillion items in it, your inventory limit is slightly less than bazillion, you only take the stuff you really need. Now, to start tagging items, go to your junk menu, fill it up with as much crap as you have so you have more items to choose from, hit component view, and then go down the list and tag away. Just remember not to tag everything because when everyone's a hero, nobody is. Once you've tagged your items, you'll see a magnifying glass next to the label when you see them, which tells you it's something you really need. Now, as you can see here, there's also a second level to tagging, so to speak, which is highlighted items. This chest here contains items I have tagged, and so it's highlighted, and that is thanks to the second level of the Scrapper perk. Scrapper's unlocked at 5 Intelligence, and the first rank gets you more stuff when you break down armor and weapons at workshops. And it's actually a great way to keep your leather up if you loot and break down Raider armor. The second rank of Scrapper is where it's really at. It gets you rare materials from breaking down armor, and it also highlights items that you have favorited or tagged. As you can see, you have to be relatively close to see the highlight effect, but in practice it's immensely helpful for finding specific items out in the wild, so I strongly recommend you invest in the Scrapper immediately. Now let's get back to our shopping list. We're going to start with adhesive, because it is far and away the most common crafting ingredient. Now you can find it out in the wild in stuff like duct tape and wonder glue, but that can be scarce and inconsistent. Thankfully, there's a much more reliable solution at every settlement. Farming. Of course, you still need the materials to start your farm. Water can be a hurdle here because it's difficult to find purified water outside of towns and settlements. Once again, the best way to get it is to get it yourself. Every advanced water purifier you install in the settlement will produce about 20 purified water every 2-3 to three in game days, and you'd have to go absolutely craft crazy to spend more than that. Next is Mupfru, which frankly I'd be impressed if you didn't have by now. You can find it growing all around Sanctuary. Scrounge around for 5 minutes and you'll come back with 10 of them. Then we have to find Tatos, which you can find plenty of at Ten Pines Bluff, just east of Sanctuary. Finally, you need corn, and for that you're going to want to head southeast of Sanctuary to Lexington and stop by Super Duper Mart. Or as I like to call it, Ghouls R Us. Seriously, bring a gun. Now let's move on to the metals, starting with copper. From Lexington, you're going to want to head southeast to Watts Consumer Electronics. This unassuming building is filled with the best sources of copper, namely light bulbs and lamps. It's also got a lot of other miscellaneous hardware that you laser weapon fans are sure to love. Next, we're going to want to head just south of Lexington to Corvega Assembly Plant. This retired old car factory is rich with metal. In addition to aluminum, you're going to find plenty of lead and steel, as well as gears and screws. There's also quite a lot of copper in the form of pipe weapons, which tend to be attached to these pesky raiders. In my experience, a well-placed grenade is the best way to separate the two. For screws, you're going to want to head east of Diamond City to Wilson Automatoys Corpor HQ. You may recognize them from the two super mutants that snipe at you from this balcony. Believe it or not, they're guarding a gold mine of screws. Now, this place is understandably filled with super mutants, but thankfully you don't have to go very far. You're just going to make a series of immediate lefts until you come to a storage room in the back here that is just filled with these little robot ponies called Giddy Up Buttercups. Each one is worth a solid chunk of screws as well as other bits of metal, and there's tons of them lying around. They're pretty heavy to transport, but the trips back and forth are worth it, trust me. And that about wraps things up. If you hit these places, you should have no crafting troubles for quite a few levels. Of course, there are other basic goods like crystal and fertilizer, but by the time you start needing those, you generally start finding them. If you are hurting for crystal, I'll give you a magic word. Cameras. For the rest of you, I wish you the best of looting. 